So every single presidential election cycle, you get this thing called the October surprise. Sometimes October surprises uh, cause some damage, and sometimes they straight up don't do anything. Case in point, sometimes they also come out like, how do I say, like perpendicular to one another, parallel, meaning like, well, the Republican got hit this week, well, next week, then the Democrat will get hit. All I have to say is that this particular October surprise, it's already backfired. Meadows, any suggestion that President Trump disparaged Ms. Keanu or refused to pay for her funeral expenses is absolutely false. Well, that would be enough, except another fact check. Her sister, Myra, posted this last night on Twitter, X. Wow, I don't appreciate how you are exploiting my sister's death for politics. Hurtful and disrespectful to the important changes she made for service members. President Donald Trump did nothing but show respect to my family and Vanessa. In fact, I voted for President wow. Trump today. President for low inflation, jobs, peace through strength, you, uh, it, uh, controlled borders. That's why they care. No one believes Jeffrey Goldberg and the article from a publication. Yo, know, guys, now that I think of it, I think that there's another reason behind this October surprise that nobody's discussed. But I'll tell you guys about that at the end of the video. And no, Steven Crowder is not the only person in this video who kind of sort of jumped on this story. But of course, this right here is a video that I'm making once again on Wednesday night to release on Thursday. Now, before we get started and before we look at all this other stuff that's come out, like, for example, John Kelly uh, talking on what appears to be, and you guys will hear it here in a second. I'm showing some of you guys in the B-roll footage, uh, discussing uh, Donald Trump wishing he had generals that were like... Uh, Hitler's generals, which I actually, as a bit of a history buff, kind of find that to be a, a, a take that uh, is not exactly the most informed, but I think it was probably something that was said uh, offhand because the truth be told is that Hitler's best generals were actually not fully obedient to him. I saw Erwin Rommel, uh, who, by the way, uh, was... Well, I'm not going to get too far into that there because that's another video altogether. But the point is this right here. This is kind of sort of the same stuff we've been hearing since like 2015, since Donald Trump uh, walked down the escalator. I mean, Donald Trump has been called Orange Hitler. He's been called Cheeto Hitler. He's been called Blonde Hitler. He's been called Hitler a lot. I mean, some of the memes here are absolutely hilarious. This is right here from Mostly Peaceful Memes. And of course, you got Laura Loomer, who, by the way, we all know is loyal to Trump, basically saying, I'm voting for Donald Trump, literally <laughs> a Jew. And then to go on top of that, there's also this quote from Mags that I found to be uh, like absolutely hilarious because it's true. We're moving our embassy to Jerusalem. Adolf Hitler. You got to ask yourself a question, guys. I mean, seriously, you got to ask yourself a question. At what point in time do these types of attacks, what time, what, at what point in time do these attacks just not work anymore? But I did say that, uh, especially when I opened this video, that there were October surprises that may have actually hurt presidential candidates before. Like uh, that time there was an October surprise, which was James Comey uh, pretty much uh, saying we're going to reopen the investigation of Hillary Clinton. This, by the way, occurred shortly right after the Billy Bush video, the infamous uh, P-word video, grandmother, I'm not going to say it. But, of course, it didn't seem to really do a whole lot. So, a lot of times, these October surprises don't really do anything, especially if they have already been debunked from the outset. And, of course, one of the people who was warning us of this was Mark Halperin, who has been on point this entire election cycle. By the way, before I play this right for you guys, I want you guys to know that Mark Halperin, he is the pollster that released the poll that the Washington Post put out, that ABC News put out back earlier this year that showed Trump absolutely destroying Joe Biden on the national stage. Halperin was fired shortly after that. And Halperin, like all pollsters, still does undecided, you know, focus groups, all type of stuff there. And he's been saying for a while that he feels that the election will be called for Donald Trump on election night. So do yourself a favor and stop stressing out about people saying we will have the official results to like one to two weeks out. Go out there and vote. That right there is what you need to do. Don't get blackpilled. But he basically hinted at this. Uh, a couple of days ago, and of course, some people are looking back at this and replaying the clip and saying, damn, he called it, when anybody who's been through this before would tell you that October surprises are not exactly uncommon, but let's listen anyways. I know of one story that's been pitched to a major newspaper and to me, and for all I know to many others, that I don't believe is true. But if it's true, as I said yesterday, it would end Donald Trump's campaign, just as if the accusations now thoroughly debunked and attributed by American intelligence to Russia about, about, um, uh, Tim Waltz, if those were true, it would end his campaign. What we're seeing in the final days, as a point I was making, is actors who want a certain outcome 
are on social media and in pitches to report Atlantic, Jeffrey Goldberg writing himself, are trying to affect the end of the race because they're so desperate to try to to try to pull a Comey. I'm not pursuing the story. I don't think it's true. People in Mar-a-Lago, calm And down. the word out of the Trump camp uh, seems to indicate that these people are not panicking because they've already responded to this. And it looks like there is another bit that's coming out here real soon that may indicate, um, well, I'm not going to go too far on it yet, but like I said, when it comes to Obama overtaking Kamala Harris's campaign, I wanted to wait a few days before I gave actual comments on it and told you exactly what I thought was really and truly going on. Still, though, at the same time, I advise you guys watch the three videos that I put out yesterday, actually, which would still technically be today. Don't worry, they will all be in the description box. I advise you guys check them out because all three of them all have some information in it. Now, there's something about this that just feels to me like a little bit odd. And as somebody who is a prior service U.S. Marine, I do feel like I do need to comment on the, um, let's just say the turn of General John Kelly, USMC. And I'm also lumping James Mattis in there. You two absolutely suck. Marines, we kind of deified these two guys uh, back um, when Obama was in office, to tell you the truth. We deified them, kind of worshipped them. Of course, after a while, you realize that these heroes of yours are not exactly, you know, actual heroes. And, of course, they've proven themselves to be absolute sellouts. I mean, look, there's this guy named Ryan James Grudusky made a very, very good point when he was talking about John Kelly's farewell tour where he's basically going to be leaving the stage, but he's got to apologize to everybody in the world for having been associated with Donald Trump's presidency uh, for roughly a year. I'm not trying to say that John Kelly is a bad man. I'm just simply trying to say that John Kelly obviously is a sellout, like Mattis, too. But what did John Kelly say that Donald Trump said? Well, let's listen. Uh Everything he did was in support of his racist, fascist uh, life, you know, the, you know, philosophy, so that nothing he did, you could argue, was good. It was certainly not done for the right reason. I'm so glad that was recorded yes. and we have a window. So hold on a second. So Trump, let's see. Mm -hmm. Fas Tr Donald Trump is um, a fascist who would want to jail political opponents. He's just like Hitler. I mean... So I know this sounds bizarre. It sounds like if I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We gotta lock him up. Für richtig hält's, ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe. That's silver tongue devil. I get, I get it. <laughs> that was him ordering it, Venus <laughs> Now, I understand that I got that from Crowder. I understand that. I get it. Some people may say that I may be cheating a little bit, but that's okay because I think I can also expand this a little bit further because then you get to the comments that were made about the young soldier who had been killed. We'll get to that soon. Here's the thing about this comment. Anybody who has half a brain already knows that Donald Trump has been called Hitler, like I said at the very beginning of the video, by these people seemingly every day since about 2015. They called Mitt Romney Hitler. They called John McCain Hitler, who, by the way, John McCain was the Republican uh, candidate that Democrats were most friendly to because John McCain, quite frankly, wasn't really a conservative. They called George W. Bush a Hitler. They called Bob Dole Hitler. They called George Herbert Walker Bush Hitler. Every Republican is Hitler to these people, okay? That's the real truth of it. Meanwhile, the current administration is literally trying to lock up its political opponents. And something else, too, that needs to be said, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, Trump had to have been saying this if he did say this offhand, as if they with no knowledge at all, if he did say it. Which, by the way, remember, this story would eventually go to the Atlantic, the same people who also made up the uh, suckers and losers bit. That also turned out to be made up. We'll cover that in a second because i got to bring you guys back to that. But Hitler's generals, most of them were for the most part yes men. But still, at the same time, a lot of them really weren't good generals. Now, von Stein was great. Rommel was great. Modell has had problems. Von Rustig kind of overrated. Guderian got, gets a lot of crap for being a guy who, uh, let's just say, operated from a position of strength. But if you got to, you like, I don't know, if you get to that position of strength and you win, then obviously you're pretty good at what you do. Maybe Trump could have been commenting on the condition of America's current generals because last I checked, we had Mark Milley as the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he absolutely sucked at his job. Don't. Get me started on Afghanistan and the current 
direction of our current military. I mean, hell, Stuart Scheller basically went to the brig for writing a damn book about it. Don't even get me started on it, but still. But still, this right here is something that's obviously to be expected by these people because that's who these people are. Now, earlier today, I was catching up on this, and this was right before I went to the gym, and I was trying to think about what I could say or what I could actually put in here, and they were showing a, uh, a, a retread of Kelly McEnany, who was Trump's press secretary at the time of the uh, suckers and losers hoax. Let me replay this for you guys because it's roughly about a minute and 25 seconds. She kind of breaks this down perfectly because, once again, we have another uh, outlet, liberal outlet, that quite frankly chose to put no sources in their article. Guys, a meeting, one in which I was in. I was not in this December meeting they speak of, but a meeting with this family. Um, and here's what the sister said about this story. Wow, I don't appreciate how you all are exploiting my sister's death for politics, hurtful, deceitful, the important changes she made for service members, and indeed she did. President Donald Trump did nothing but show respect to my family and Vanessa. I was in that July meeting. That was undoubtedly the case. But the reason my antennas went up last night when I saw the name Jeffrey Goldberg is because I was on a tarmac in September of 2020 and a story popped from him in the Atlantic and it was the suckers and losers story we have all heard. Within hours, I was able to collect more than a dozen individuals, several who, several who were firsthand sources saying that never happened. Zach Fuentes, who was an aide of John Kelly, came out and said that never happened. We found contemporaneous documents disputing the reporter who said Trump did not go to the cemetery, not because of a bad weather call. John Bolton's book disputes that. We found a contemporaneous document to dispute that. My point is, this is based on four anonymous sources, mm -hmm. two weeks before an election, 100%. disputed by people on the record, and yet it led a CBS News broadcast. What a shame. Did they what which brings us to the other half of the October surprise, apparently something that Trump had said about a young soldier who had been killed. Uh, $60,000 for a Mexican's funeral? Yeah, something about this where it just doesn't sound correct. But once again, though, Crowder was one of the first people to come out and actually report and debunk this. Fallen Mexican soldier, and uh, I believe her name is uh, Vanessa uh, Guillen. Mm -hmm. or is, is that, I, I want to make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. I believe so, yeah. So these are the headlines that you saw yesterday. These are the bombshells. According to attendees and to contemporaneous notes of the meeting taken by a participant, an aide answered, yes, we received a bill. The funeral cost $60,000. Trump became angry. It doesn't cost 60000 bucks to bury a bleeping Mexican. He turned to his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and issued an order. Quote, don't pay it. Okay, so someone said that they heard him say this. I said, well, the uh, problem is Mark Meadows already came out and said this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Quote mm -hmm. from Beddoes, any suggestion that President Trump disparaged Ms. Guillen or refused to pay for her funeral expenses is absolutely false. Well, that would be enough, except another fact check. Her sister, Myra, posted this last night on Twitter, X. Wow, I don't appreciate how you are exploiting my sister's death for politics. Hurtful and disrespectful to the important changes she made for service members. President Donald Trump did nothing but show respect to my family and Vanessa. In fact, I voted for President wow. Trump today. So this is important, but where have we heard this before? Almost everything that you think you may not like about Donald Trump, a lot of it, all has been presented with the same kinds of sources, which brings us to our newest installment, Curious Quinn. Number one, it doesn't really make any sense. Oh, wait, it, 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 it does make sense. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why it makes sense. What you're seeing right here in the B-roll footage, 49% of Hispanics voting for Donald Trump? That's according to Suffolk, not Fox News. If it was Fox News, I had know the poll was fake. Fox News is terrible. Suffolk University, 49%. It may be 49% of those who are remaining who have not yet voted, which you know could still, that's still a lot of Hispanic votes. That's the state of New Mexico, that's the state of Nevada, that's the state of Arizona, which by the way, Arizona's probably going to flip anyways, and Nevada, the numbers look really good for Republicans. But it could also help out with congressional seats in Southern California, not to mention in Nevada. It would also help out with congressional seats in Colorado, it could possibly swing a couple more in Texas. I'm pretty sure you guys get the point. It seems to me like this right here was obviously released for political purposes targeted at uh, one particular group. 
there's also a lot more to this story, a lot more to this October surprise that I would get into for this video here, but I am going to link the video from Mark Dice in the description box here because he did a very, very good job of breaking this down as well and much, much shorter my time. I'm coming at this from the more political aspect, the more political side, but of course, CNN, they had a segment on this that I thought was absolutely hilarious, especially given the fact that the journalist, the woman who's actually leading the conversation, the woman that you're seeing in the B-roll footage, uh, who's in the white. Yeah, this woman completely exposed exactly how bad the mainstream media is in this entire segment. So let's go ahead and get to that. This, Ryan, we bring you in here. You know, there is a value in either planting seeds or undermining the media or suggesting that you can't trust them and you can trust what I have to say because I have a feeling that there are a number of voters who are hearing so many things about Trump. They're hearing the claims, they're hearing the statements, they're hearing about members of the cabinet saying no can do, no will do again. And then you hear Trump's campaign saying this is false. President Trump never said any of this. I mean, Trump though tonight praised authoritarian... Well, if the story is in fact false, then of course the campaign is going to say that it's false. Also, something else too, you have to ask yourself a question. Why is it that nobody believes the media? Can you imagine what President Xi, you know, I got to know him very well. He's a fierce individual. He runs 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. Am I allowed to say he's smart? Is he smart? He's a smart man. He's a fierce man. I got along with them very well. Putin, these are people that are tough people. I mean, many people have an issue with appraising of any kind of either of these two leaders. Does the fact that he appears to have a, a strong affinity for those who are authoritarians in the leadership, does that, is that deniable? Okay, obviously this kind of language right here tells you that our mainstream media does in fact want the United States to get to another conflict, which I don't think is a good idea at this moment in time, regardless of who the president is. The point, if, look, if you guys remember correctly, the mainstream media, they were praising Trump after he bombed Syria. They were praising Trump after he bombed Afghanistan. Funny. But this is not how you conduct foreign policy. You don't just go out there and insult the hell out of other leaders. You don't insult uh, someone like, say, Putin. You don't insult Xi Jinping. But you typically tend to not insult other world leaders. Okay, that's not what you do. That's not how you conduct foreign policy. So either A, you're trying to push an agenda that would lead us to war, or B, you're just being a complete total moron. But let's continue. Well, in the clip you showed, he didn't praise them. He just called G smart, which is the only praise he gave them. Well, it's but not an the, insult. It's not. Okay, <laughs> well, it's not a... How stupid is this freaking woman? Let's continue. Okay, right. well, it's not, a, but it's not praise either, which is what you said it was, which it wasn't. But according to the Jeffrey Goldberg article, which we've talked about this entire night, you can't trust that article because the quote 60,000 for an effing Mexican funeral, the only two Ooh. on record sources both said that he didn't say that. The only source is an anonymous source, and the family of the deceased soldier said that he was lovely to them, and in fact, they voted for Donald Trump today. That's how much they disagreed, and they said it was a disrespect. The family, in my opinion, needs to sue Jeffrey Goldberg. And not only does the family need to sue Jeffrey Goldberg, but Donald Trump needs to sue Jeffrey Goldberg as well. I'd also sue John Kelly because John Kelly is out here running his mouth doing this farewell tour, and we have no idea uh, how accurate his statements are. But still, though, they need to be sued into oblivion. The Atlantic is a publication that has never really and truly produced anything that was actually truthful. I mean, go back to the suckers and the losers story. They never actually had a source but yet the people that Kelly McEnany were able to run down, and I definitely remember this matter because John Bolton, a uh, Trump hater, was the first person to come out and say, no, that did not happen. So, I mean, where do these people get these ideas from? I really truly don't know. And by the way, also something else to go on top of this, no sources had been linked to the article. And then to go on top of that there, once again, all the sources were, in fact, anonymous, which means that they weren't never real sources to begin with because a real source will actually put their name or they'll put their face to the actual article itself, which, of course, they did not in this case. But let's continue. That politicized the death of their loved one. And Jeffrey Goldberg did not care about printing something that they had no sources on the record for. And I honest to God, like most Americans, do not care about General Kelly's uh, farewell tour where he tries to make amends for working for Donald Trump. Since Democrats said, we're going to run all these Republicans work for Trump out of town unless they somehow make peace. So two weeks before Election Day, he runs to liberal uh, journalist Susan Glasser about a conversation that allegedly happened four years ago. It doesn't pass a smell test. And that is why... 
people are turned off to all of these stories. No, it doesn't. It definitely does not pass the smell test. This right here is an article that would have been more effective if it had been released maybe six or seven weeks ago, because then it would have been brought up at the debate. But even then, if it had been brought up at the debate, that still probably would not have an effect because it would have looked like something that uh, you would want to gang up on the former president with. It probably would have been more effective if it had been released four weeks ago or possibly eight to ten weeks ago. It would have been more effective then. Also, to go on top of that, it's like what Gerdiski just said. Why in the world do you wait till now to release this article? Well, I think I know the real reason why that is the case, and I kind of hinted at it earlier. And, of course, I'll tell you guys on the other side of this one, which, by the way, is the longer section. But like I said before, this right here is an October surprise that definitely has backfired and blown up in liberals' faces. Remember Donald Trump's president for low inflation, or jobs, peace through strength, controlled borders. That's why they care. No one believes Jeffrey Goldberg and the article from a publication that's owned by one of Harris's Laura. donors. Mm -hmm. But to the point of, you know, how this is viewed by voters, I mean, to, and I know you were talking, Jamal, I want to get you in here. What you have said just now, Ryan, I think is very illustrative of what I think you're seeing from, report, from supporters of Trump who refuse to look at this in a way that is portrayed in the media. They do not see this in the same way. This woman literally just say that people do not believe us. People do not believe the way we report it. And you, you wonder why it is that nobody, you wonder why it is that nobody takes the media uh, serious at all. And also what Gerdeski had also said was that people at this moment in time, he said this earlier in the discussion, People really and truly are not caring, which, by the way, does, in fact, suck because you should always care about this, but you should always care more about what is the media is putting out because you need to be able to know if it's telling the truth or not. And obviously, it looks to me like this way here's another one of these stories that just flat out turn out to be bunk. However, there are people out there that are obviously going to see this and say, oh, my God, the vast majority of them are going to vote for Harris anyway. So, no, I don't see how the hell it changes anybody's mind. However, however, I do think there is another reason behind this. Here's that reason. Donald Trump has been shot this year, nicked in the ear. There was a second attempt down at Mar-a-Lago. Kamala Harris, is uh, she's already been giving a speech, like, like a three-minute long speech, where she basically said, Trump, Hitler, Trump, bad. That Basically the normal stuff, which, by the way, actually does more turn off their own voters or would-be voters because they want to hear you on policy. All right? It worked in 2020. It didn't work here. And, of course, I've been talking about how it is that the, well, Richard Barris has done it the most, but I've made mention to it. How is it the mainstream media should be preparing people for potential loss? I have a feeling that what's going to happen is that the election just may get called on election night. If you look at the early voting numbers so far, uh, they're not looking for good for Democrats. So if that right there is the case and Trump, of course, is set to go into the White House, it makes you also wonder if Kamala Harris would, in fact, concede. Now, I listened to Real American Politics earlier and he basically indicated that he actually thinks that she will if she loses. I personally don't think that she will. I think that she just won't say anything at all. And I think at some point in time, these people are going to pump up the rhetoric more and more and more like they are already doing. Because as you guys are seeing here in the B-roll footage, there's a lot of stuff here that indicates that Kamala Harris is about to experience a massive loss. And these people can't do anything to stop it. Ain't no Obama. Oh, no Obama ain't nothing going to come out here and save her. And of course, there's also more October surprises to come that just may hit her side of the aisle, hit her campaign which is already falling apart as it is. I think that this right here was designed to help pump up the rhetoric, the orange Hitler rhetoric that they normally throw out there. I mean, look at the Drudge Report's actual, and by the way, that's an actual real article. Matt Drudge has hated Donald Trump ever since Trump got elected. There's been a big time falling out, and Matt Drudge has kind of joined in the Trump hate. What I'm saying to you guys is I think the ulterior motive upon further review is that this particular situation was designed to pump up the never Trump rhetoric or the Trump is literally Hitler rhetoric. I think that's exactly the reason why they did this. They've been pumping it up for close to a damn decade when you actually add the years. And of course, this caused two people to actually go out there and actually try something. Let's also not forget that after Trump got elected, you had a Bernie Sanders supporter literally shoot Steve Scalise. Let's not forget all the other incidents. I mean, I don't think I need to go through every single one of them. But I'm pretty sure you guys are catching my drift. I think that this October surprise, while it has in fact backfired, I think that there was actually much, much more sinister implications behind this than uh, the normal, typical October surprises. But you guys send what you think in the comment section. Now, guys, there may be only one other video coming out tomorrow. But I'm going to try to get this video out tomorrow, probably at 11 or 12. I'm not sure. 
But what I may do is kind of let the algorithm kind of breathe a little bit. There are a lot of the topics I do want to talk about this weekend. Like, for example, the situation that's going on with Twitch and left the streamers. And, of course, something that Hassan Pikeray said the other day. That's not a video that's going to be designed to make fun of him or anything. It's just going to be a video just to talk about what it was that he said because he may have actually made a very good point in one that nobody saw. And, of course, also the bit that I wanted to do on Anna Kasperi and where what happens to the left going forward. I might get that video out tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure. There's a couple of more things I need to kind of pick up, but that video may not get made till tomorrow or get released till, until late tomorrow afternoon, probably the 5 o'clock segment. Still, though, make sure you guys please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comments, and I'll see you guys later.